Researchers at the Mayo Clinic in Arizona decided to find out if eating red meat affects a patient's mortality. You've probably heard it time and time again that red meat can lead to heart disease, can lead to cancer, can lead to early death, and that there are plenty of studies to support that theory. But is that right? Red meat has been maligned so much by the healthcare community, it's claimed to be backed in science. But when you look at the quality of the science, does it really support the claims? We've published many different articles at Diet Doctor pointing out how the evidence doesn't match the recommendations. I can see how you would be so confused by this because it seems like every week there's a new study saying that red meat is harmful, red meat isn't harmful. Like, how do you know what to do? Well, I'm Dr. Brett Scher, the medical director at dietdoctor.com, and I want to talk about a new study that probably helps clarify this a little bit. There's one about red meat that's so important, but then another about fat and even trans fats that I think kind of works well with this to talk about the two together. And I recently wrote a post about this at dietdoctor.com. But let's talk about this study. It was an analysis of the PURE study, which is a large, over 100,000 people from multiple continents and countries, a true global multinational study. And what they did was, you know, it is a, a weak nutritional epidemiology study um, where the information isn't always that reliable because they fill out a food frequency questionnaire of what they ate, which is not very accurate. Um, and then they just crunched the data to see who had heart attacks, who had strokes, who had cancer, who died early, and what were they eating? Now, what's a little bit different about this study was there was absolutely no difference from the highest red meat eaters to the lowest red meat eaters in terms of risk of cancer, death, heart disease, stroke. No difference whatsoever. That may come as a surprise to a lot of people who are concerned about red meat because other studies have shown the opposite. But here's one of the most important points I think about this study. The studies that tend to show a, a difference in health outcomes by the people who eat the most red meat, those studies are really conflicted by what's called healthy user bias. So when you look at the baseline characteristics of the people who eat more red meat, they tend to be less educated. They tend to make less money. They're more likely to be male rather than female. They tend to smoke more, drink more alcohol, exercise less. They eat more calories in total. They have more unhealthy life habits. So based on that and based on the low quality evidence, there's no way you can say for sure that it was the red meat and not this healthy user bias. But here's the point I'm getting at. This analysis of the PURE study appeared to not have that healthy user bias. When you look at the baseline characteristics of the lowest meat eaters and the highest meat eaters, they're pretty equivalent. It doesn't show the same consistent findings that we see on so many other trials done in the United States or in Europe or the United Kingdom. But instead, my hypothesis is that this the global nature of this study kind of equaled out that or canceled out that healthy user bias. That's not proven, but I think that might be one reason why this study did not show a relationship between red meat and poor health outcomes. So, and here's another thing about nutritional epidemiology studies. If they show, if it's a well-run trial with a large number of people and it shows no association to a specific food group and negative health outcomes, then chances are, there's not a very strong signal there, right? Because even if, let's just assume, yes, red meat leads to cancer and heart disease and early death, but a study of over 170,000 people didn't pick up on it, then that difference has to be pretty minuscule. Now, I would argue there's no difference at all. There's no credible science to say that red meat itself causes these negative health outcomes. So, And I think this is just one more piece of the puzzle to show that that's not the case. Now, interestingly, though, the same study also looked at processed meat. And there they did see a small increased risk. And there still wasn't a, a huge healthy user bias, although there, there was a higher percentage of men than women eating more processed meat. So that's, that's definitely one factor. What this might suggest is that the closer to its natural state meat is, the less bad or the healthier it is for you. And the more processed it is, the more other things are put in it, then perhaps that could make the difference. Because when you look at processed meat, sometimes it's loaded with sugar or soy, or fillers, or you know vegetable oils, or other things that go into processed meats. 
as opposed to just a steak on the grill, you know what's in it, right? So that complicates the analysis a little bit. But that's what I found so interesting. The red meat did not have any association to cancer, stroke, heart attack, death, and processed meat had a small association. Again, small association. So what does that mean for you as an individual? Well, if you're following a diet that includes some processed meats, but it means you can get off of the refined carbohydrates and the excessive caloric consumption or the highly refined vegetable oils or other potential, you know, combined carb, fat, processed foods. If that diet allows you to get away from those other harmful foods, then maybe it's a good trade-off for you because the risk is so small. That's an individual decision. All right, now let's get to this other study. It was a review of all the systematic reviews of fat from monounsaturated fat, polyunsaturated fat, and saturated fat, and even trans fat. And it tried to just bring all the evidence together and say, is there any evidence that increasing your fat intake increases your risk of cardiovascular disease, of death, of negative health outcomes? And the answer was no, there isn't. Whether it was monounsaturated fat, polyunsaturated fat, or even saturated fat. There was no statistical difference in terms of increased risk from the people who ate more of those foods. So again, it's not the food itself. It's likely healthy user bias. It's likely poorly controlled studies, or it's likely the dietary context itself rather than the red meat, the saturated fat. And then the last point to make, the study also looked at trans fats, right? And when you think of trans fats, if you're like me, you think of margarine, you think of things made in industrial centers, you think of what goes into pie crust and baked goods and those types of fats, but they compared those trans fats versus natural ruminant trans fats, so the trans fats you would find in a cow and meat. They showed a significant difference. There was no increased risk from the natural ruminant trans fats, but there was with the industrial trans fats. So what do we take home from all this? My take home is meat, fat, saturated fat, even trans fats in their natural state as minimally processed as possible has absolutely no negative health risks. And I think the science is starting to back that up. The more processed it becomes, the more things you put in it, the more you alter it and chemically change it, that's when we start to see the needle move in terms of risk. So if you're sticking to a low carb diet, minimally processed diet that's giving you adequate protein, adequate nutrition, and is focusing on food as close to its natural state as possible, that's a win-win. And I think you're doing great if you're doing that because there's no science to say that that is a dangerous or harmful diet. So we have to be careful how we interpret these studies. These two studies that we wrote about here at dietdoctor.com really help bring that into light. All right, I hope this was helpful. If it was, please hit the thumbs up button and the subscribe button down below so you'll get all our updates here on Diet Doctor News on YouTube. Thanks a lot. Have a great day, everybody. Thank you.